This morning, giving thanks. Meet three people who have special reason to give thanks this holiday season. This is the Emmy Award-winning 11 News Close-Up with your host, Marvin Scott. Good morning, everyone. Hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. For many of us, it is a holiday we tend to take for granted, a time to get together with families and enjoy a turkey dinner and to race out for early shopping on Black Friday. For others, well, Thanksgiving, it takes on special meaning when they consider the challenges they had to overcome for it to become a day to give thanks. This morning, we meet three special people who have emerged from the depths of adversity to find new beginnings. Meet Sarah Toffoli. She did something for which she deserved the thanks. But in donating a kidney to a total stranger, her entire life changed and she is the one grateful for the opportunity. That's true. Jeffrey Deskovic, he gives thanks every day of his life for DNA science that helped clear him of murder and sprung him from prison after 16 years for a crime he did not commit. And Kamika Marsh is a single mom being freed from the shackles of poverty and realizing her dream of a college education. So welcome to all of you, and it's so good to have you and to celebrate this holiday season with you. I'd like to ask, begin, I want to tell each of your stories individually, but I want to begin by asking what it is that makes this Thanksgiving so special to each of you. You want to start, Sarah? I would say I'm most thankful for the love and support of my family, most especially my husband, Greg. I couldn't have done my kidney donation without him, and the wonderful consequences that came out of that, I couldn't have done without him. Okay, can't wait to hear your story. Jeffrey? I'm thankful just to be in law school, uh, which is uh, my dream is to exonerate uh, other people, even as I was exonerated. So I'm thrilled to have be free and have this opportunity. Thank you. I'm thankful for having three wonderful children. Um, have, being a single mom of three is very important for me to instill values um, in, in them, which made me want to succeed more. Um, it's also, I'm also thankful for the opportunity to be able to attend college so I will be able to graduate. All wonderful and nice to see your smiles. Okay, let's let's zero in now on the story. Let's zero in on Sarah's story. This is quite heartrending. She was inspired by a Help Me Howard report right here on PIX11 about a man who was in desperate need of a new kidney. Now, the married New Jersey executive assistant proved to be a perfect match and claims that she was the beneficiary of the kidney that she gave to a total stranger. Howard Thompson fills us in on her story. Now I've got what I call a, a wonderful black brother in Florida. <laughs> a couple of years ago, Sarah Toffoli couldn't even have dreamed of a moment like this, and all Tori Green could do was dream about it. People you don't even know are willing to <laughs> do all kinds of things for strangers. And, well, that gives me hope that, you know, something really good will happen for me. The Florida middle school art teacher was on dialysis and desperately needed a kidney transplant. He came to New York to get in the donor registry here. We did a story on his plight. In their Boundbrook, New Jersey home, with Sarah's husband Greg asleep on the couch and looking something like this, Sarah saw our story. When I saw Tori, I just, I, I said, this is a person I've been waiting for. She was a perfect match. In July last year, Tori had his new kidney. I woke up with that new kidney and I thought, wow, it actually happened. And a new life. Thank you, Howard. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Likewise. And all the good things that you deserve, may you have them. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, much. brother. You take care. I will. Stay strong. But Sarah has a new life as well. Bend your knees and heels together, toes apart. Seeing myself in black and white, like I said, on TV, uh, really drove home the point that I wasn't as healthy as I needed to be. She's taken up Pilates and running. Love it. Love it. And I feel stronger and healthier than I ever have. Her kidney is great, and all she has to show for her surgery is a little scar. Do, 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 do. Neither one of us have had any issues or any complications whatsoever. A little scar to save a life. As for having just one kidney, she doesn't feel any different than before. I have absolutely no regrets. And now I'm all better. Tori looks great back in his classroom. And in September, Sarah and Greg came to visit. 
This beautiful angel is a person who donated her kidney so that I could still be alive and be with you. This is Holy Tofoli. This is Miss Sarah Tofoli. She's a saint. A saint, Sarah. You feel like a saint? No. Tori I, said the same I, thing. I think, I think, though, you need tissues because I saw how emotional and choked up you were getting while watching that report. <laughs> I think Tori's rubbed off on me in that regard because he tends to get very emotional when we talk. Um, I've given him cupcakes and he's given me tears. <laughs> um, I, I'm just so blessed to have met him. It is, yours is such a unique and it, it is a heartrending story. I mean, someone to come forward, see something on television that you saw with Helmy Howard, and someone who was a total stranger. What motivated you to say you wanted to give up your kidney? I saw his piece and I saw in his eyes that deep down he was a man that was almost broken. He'd had donors that had backed out on him and he'd been hooked up to dialysis which was draining him of his life energy. The only thing that had him going was his students. And he mentioned briefly how he had a hard childhood growing up and personally I was diagnosed with PTSD 25 years ago so I know what it's like to have a rough childhood I know what it's like to come through those struggles and I said here's a chance for me to do something good and I think my husband really struggled with it as a scientist because he knew statistics and he knew the odds and he said to me he said I don't want you to be the statistic that something goes wrong but he became peaceful with it when I said to him I survived my life for a reason and I think this is why. And it felt almost as if it was a calling. It was just, mm. he was in the right place at the right time for me to say, this is a person I've been waiting for to donate my kidney. And you put your own life at risk in doing this. But it turned your life around. How, I, I use the word beneficiary because that's something you say. You feel you were a beneficiary of this. Very much. How did it change your life? Tori treasures the kidney I gave him. He actually nicknamed it Sarah, and he takes very good care of himself. He's always been very diligent about his health, even when he was sick. And he said, I have to take care of the gift you've given me. And I realized as time went on, I was way overweight, and I know that being heavy puts you at risk for different illnesses. And as you get older, it doesn't get easier. And in a nutshell, it was what motivated me to get myself in shape and treasure the one remaining kidney I had. So since I donated surgery, your viewers will notice, I've lost a little weight. I've lost over 60 pounds. Wow. So. That, that is really remarkable. Usually in a situation like this, it's the donor who gives <laughs> thanks, but here it is one, it's the recipient who gives thanks, and here it's the case where the donor is giving thanks. And so this makes this Thanksgiving so special. So special, so. so special. And Tori has been one of my biggest cheerleaders. I would text him pictures and send him notes and tell him, you know, I'm down this many pounds, or I'm in this size, or I'm doing this. And he was just so happy and so proud of me. And he's just really happy that I'm in great shape now. And so is my husband. My husband's actually lost a few pounds, which he didn't need to, but he's much healthier. So he joined you in, in, in the diet. I couldn't have done it what, without what him. What was the secret? Everybody asks me what the secret is, and it's not diet. I consider diet a four-letter word. It's just nutrition and exercise and, you know, eating right, everything in moderation. Any regrets? We heard you in the piece. You said no regrets. None. No regrets. None whatsoever. I actually wish I had more kidneys to give away. Oh, that is wonderful. Well, it is so good to hear your story and to have you on the program with us today. Thank We're you. going to take a break. We're going to come back. We'll hear Kamika March's story. Stay with us as Giving Thanks continues with this special PIX11 News Close-Up. Welcome back to this special holiday PIX11 News Close-Up, giving thanks. And we have three special people with us this morning. Right now, let's meet Kamika Marsh. She is a single mom of three children who refuses to be defeated. She's a security guard for a company that helped her and her children get out of the city shelter system and find an apartment. She's now setting her sights on a brighter future because she's getting a college education. It was her dream, and she hopes to find a job as a paralegal. Before we start talking to her, let's get her story from Monica Morales. 
This next story will inspire you. We already know moms are heroes. This next mom, she is a warrior. She's fighting to go back to school and finish college. We're making it happen. Oh, hello. Kamika Marsh has three beautiful children, nine-year-old Michaela, seven-year-old Malik, and her one-year-old baby girl, Madison. She is a security guard at night at the same shelter that helped her years ago. She reached out to us for help. She wants to be an example to her daughter and finally finish college. She would be the first in her family to do so. I almost gave up and I was thinking, should I go today, should I don't, because I've been turned down so many times. It takes courage, Kamika. Having three babies and bills, her dream is to finally finish college at LaGuardia Community College. We have good news for her. We reached out to LaGuardia, and the people here at LaGuardia love your story and support you 100%, and they want to help you. They want to help you. Thank you. LaGuardia has a foundation that helps people just like Kamika with scholarships, emergency funds for textbooks, metro cards, even housing. I'm going to ask you to fill out an application so we can get that process started. So she's meeting the director of development to enroll and to weigh her options. Um, Monica May said, if you have a story to tell, um, to call and email her. They will support her and guide her so she's not alone. And another surprise. Next time I shake your hand, I want you to be in a cap and gown. Yeah. Right, and I want your kids screaming and yelling. The and president of LaGuardia wanted to meet with Kamika personally. We found that scholarships of $500 can change somebody's life. Kamika now has this simple message. Don't give up, but there's always that light at the end of the tunnel. We will be there every step of the way. Did you hear that? We're behind you. You have a team. We're going to be there at graduation. Keep that GPA up. And if you are at home, you can give to the foundation. Of course, to beautiful families like this one that need a little bit of help, log on to our website. And if you have a story, just email me at monica at pix11.com. That's monica at pix11.com. It could be in your neighborhood next. In Long Island City, Monica Morales, Pix11 News. Go Kamika. And here is Kamika Marsha. Thanks to Monica for that report. I guess the moral of your story is, and you said it there, don't, don't give, give up. Tell us more about your story, how you got there and, and how how life has changed for you since last Thanksgiving? Well, I believe as a single parent of three, it's very imperative to instill core values in your children, um, such as dignity, self-respect, and respect for others, and the pursuit and um, higher learning. So I, as a parent, I want my children to know that it's, it's okay to to have downfalls, but you have to get up and continue to go in because education is, is very important. I want them to be able to have a great career and with that, um, it starts with me. So I, um, I want to show them the, um, the ropes. I want to be able to um, be the perfect role model for other parents as well and for my children. I want other parents out there that felt like giving up at one point. They felt like the going has gotten too tough. I want them to know not to give up, to continue going and show the world what you're capable of. So you never felt defeated? No. How did you get out of the, the shelter system? How did um, you manage to do that? Well, it was very tough. It was a very tough time. I had a one-year-old at the time. My daughter was one, and it was very emotional. I was struggling financially, and the company that I'm working for now, um, I reached out to them, and they actually um, called me, and we did an interview, and they helped me find housing. And while we were um, going through that process, they also helped me get um, a Section 8, which um, helped me with my rent at the time and employment. And you're now uh, in school and you are studying to become a paralegal. Where do you stand in your education right now? Um, right now I've registered for classes, um, which will start in March. Um, that's my last semester, um, which then I'll graduate in the um, summer. How old are your children? I have a nine-year-old who's about to be 10, um, a seven-year-old and a one-year-old. And they understand, oh, well, except for the one-year-old, they understand uh, what's going on and proud of mommy? Yes, they're proud. They wanted to be here today, <laughs> um, but they had to go to school. I explained to them, you have to go to school. Um, you can't skip school um, to come with mommy because it's, uh, schooling is very important. 
So the whole message of your story that you would share with others who are watching us this morning who feel downtrodden, they don't feel this is such a great Thanksgiving for them, what would that be? What would your message be? Um, my message would be that you have to be thankful for what you have. Um, and also, if you feel like this is, this is not the year for you, you have, you have to look ahead and be determined um, to succeed. And as you say, never give up. Never give up. Okay, Kamiga March, thank you. We're going to take a break, come back, we're going to meet another special person giving thanks, Jeffrey Deskovic. We'll be right back. Giving thanks, picks close up. We'll be right back. This holiday weekend with three special people who have come from adversity to celebrate lots to celebrate this Thanksgiving let's meet now Jeffrey Deskovic Jeffrey's story is a tale of justice gone awry he was another of those wrongfully convicted people who languished for years in prison for crimes he didn't commit it cost him 16 years of his life once the defendant at trial he's now studying law to be the defender at trial James Ford has his story. Jeffrey Deskovic was a Peekskill High School student when fellow student Angela Coria was found raped, beaten, and strangled. Through a false confession, he was convicted of murder and sex crimes in 1990. It took 16 years and DNA evidence to prove that another man committed the brutal crimes and for Deskovic to walk out of court a free man. He walked out again today for another milestone. I remember, you know, my not so pleasant moments here and also the moment where I came out. Uh, but so that definitely goes through my mind. But then the other thing that goes through my mind is, you know, I feel like I'm a symbol of justice. Here's how. Deskovic is set to start another chapter in his life just nine blocks and what seems like an eternity away from where he was convicted and later released. I'm kind of coming full circle and because of its geographical proximity, this school has a sentimental value to me. Monday will be the first day of classes for him at Pace University's Elizabeth Haub School of Law. I want to sit at the defense table and make the arguments myself. Since his prison release 10 years ago, Deskovic started a foundation that supports dozens of other exonerees and has gotten two wrongful convictions overturned. Uh, thanks to James Ford for that report. Uh, Jeffrey Deskovic is uh, now marking his 10th Thanksgiving as a free man after sitting and languishing for 16 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. So how's your life changed over the past 10 years? Wow, it's from prisoner doing a life sentence <clears throat> to graduating with the bachelor's degree from Mercy College thanks to the scholarship they gave me to getting the master's degree to now, you know, being in law school. But now that's quite an accomplishment going to law school and you want to be a de the defender I do indeed I want to exonerate people who are wrongfully uh, wrongfully in prison just as I was now, tell us more about your story I mean because people could can't visualize now you and I have discussed this on previous programs but sitting in prison caged in there an eight by eight cell knowing you're there because there was a crime you didn't commit the degradation or just try to take a moment and, and, and describe for our viewers what that life was like. I would describe it as a nonstop obstacle course featuring the guards, civilians, and other prisoners as obstacles to the main goal, which was to try to regain my freedom, to pr clear my name. Um, that was, and then on top of that, you know, I mean, I lost seven appeals. I got turned down for parole. Uh, it was frustrating as uh, many people were exonerated by DNA. Meanwhile, the DNA excluded me before trial, yet I was wrongfully uh, imprisoned. Basically, I spent uh, from years 17 to 32 in prison. How do, you, how do you live day in and day out, knowing you're there and no one's hearing you and say, I didn't do it? Uh, belief in God is one thing. Secondly, uh, I focused on, on each next legal proceeding, so I thought I was, I was going to uh, be exonerated and released because I was innocent. So you kept going on hope. I kept going on hope, yeah. So let's talk about hope and let's talk about this Thanksgiving, this beautiful holiday season. 
Talk about that. Yeah, this particular uh, Thanksgiving and holiday season has a particular uh, significance to me because, again, I'm in law school with the goal of um, exonerating people. Uh, it was my childhood dream to be a lawyer, and this is a rare opportunity where someone who was exonerated can still have a chance to live their childhood uh, dream. Now, tell us a little bit about your foundation. You've helped many others who were in a similar situation as yours. So you are giving back. I absolutely am giving back, Marvin. Yes, I was, comp I was compensated financially, and I used some of the money to start the organization, the Jeffrey Deskovic Foundation for Justice. Basically, we free wrongfully convicted people. We also work to prevent this from happening through raising awareness and seeking legislative changes. And you're working uh, also towards uh, prison reform of, of a lot of the, the measures and a lot of activities that go on behind uh, those uh, those bars in prison. Absolutely, I feel strongly about that. People are sent to prison as punishment, not for punish punishment. And what what is the the top reform that you think is required? Because I, I think Governor Cuomo has been listening to this. They they talk about making changes and turning things around. I mean, people are due punishment for the crimes they are honestly convicted of. But what are the changes that are foremost that have to be? In terms of wrongful conviction or general criminal justice Both. reform? Both. All right, so in terms of wrongful conviction, uh, definitely videotaping interrogations and having a commission on prosecutor conduct. Uh, in, terms of prison in terms of prison reform, um, a lot of people, nonviolent offenders, are, are in prison uh, for really long stretches of time, while at the same time, people who are there for violent acts that have been committed decades ago that have been rehabilitated are still turned down for parole. And we have elderly people uh, with debilitating illnesses still in prison. Those okay. things need to change. In the couple of minutes we have left, let's bring in all of you, Kamika and Sarah and, uh, and Jeffrey. Talk about what makes this holiday, this Thanksgiving, so special to each of you. You all share something in common well, because you've all come out of the depths of adversity, and look look where you are now. Well, something extra special about this Thanksgiving holiday is that I'm with these these two guests here. I mean, to to donate a kidney, I mean that's like that blows my mind, and you know just your spirit of just never giving up and valuing education. I mean, clearly that's something I value as well. So this makes it even extra uh, extra special as well. And Kamika, I would also what you've been through and to come out on top, that's very inspiring. And that makes me want to go further now because to hear your story and to know that you are so brave to give someone a part of you with no fear, no regrets is awesome. And that's something that I would want to, and as we were speaking earlier, you've um, come a long way and you've chosen your healthy route after this. Mm -hmm. And you inspired me to go that way as well. Thank you. I think an additional commonality, Marvin, that we share is number one, just we all, uh, just overcoming a adversity is one thing, and then also the altruistic desire of, you know, wanting to make a difference, helping people just for the sake of doing it. Sarah? We were chatting in the green room, and it's, it's funny. Um, none of us are very shy. We, we introduced ourselves, and we were chatting, and we had so much in common, even though each of our stories is very unique to each of us. But we all, I think the underlying current for me is just perseverance and having faith and, and believing in the good of others. So the message that you would all send out to our viewers this morning who maybe is still a little hungover from Thanksgiving and Black Friday, and what would the message you would send to them? Appreciate the small things. I appreciate just, you know, the sunlight, fresh air, freedom of movement. Uh, that and that would be the main thing to appreciate. And the other thing is, again, no matter what the situation is, uh, never give up. And that is the theme of Kamika. Yes, it is. <laughs> so that's the message you would send out. Um, like I was saying earlier to um, so Sarah is, I've learned this in college. Failure brings success. Not because you fail today doesn't mean tomorrow won't bring success. Just keep on going and never give up. Good guidance. And your final words, Sarah? My final words would be, put down the mimosa. Thanksgiving <laughs> was one day. Now get back on track to health and nutrition. And please, if you're not an organ donor, to please think about registering. The three of you are all such an inspiration. And thank you for joining us and sharing your story this morning. Thank Thanks you. so much for thank having us. Thanks to us. Sarah Toffoli and Kamika Marsh and Jeffrey Deskovic. And happy holiday to all of you. Happy holidays. Marvin. Happy holidays. Same and uh, from what we have learned from this morning's guests, well, should give us all a moment to pause and reflect on all that we should be grateful for and focus on all that is good in our lives. Hope you had a wonderful holiday. 
That'll do it for our program for this week. If you have any comments or wish to see this broadcast again, log on to our website, mix11.com slash news close up. I'm Marvin Scott. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend, everyone.